I'm joined once again by Anthony Lionheart Smith, who's going to be going into Brazil at UFC Fight Night 125 on February 30th. He's taking on Tiago Santos. Anthony, what's going on? How are you? I'm good, man. Just hanging out here in Denver still. Uh, today's my last day of camp here, and then I, I head back to Omaha and fly out for Brazil on Monday. Nice. You got it all mapped out. How long were you in Denver this time? Um, I believe this is my fifth week here. Okay, um, great. So I'm here Monday through Friday. Uh, and I go home every weekend still and see my, see my family. Yeah. We talked about that. I mean, that's something I guess you're just used to now just doing it all the time, but, uh, I mean, you got to do what's best for your career and obviously factory X is, is the place to be if you're a middleweight. Yeah, for sure, man. There's a great group of guys there. Um, I love the gym. I love the coaches. I love the team. Um, those guys are like family to me. So, uh, uh I love it here, man. And I'll tell you what's the opposite of love. Uh, this tweet you had, I got to talk about this. I thought this was hilarious um, and, and just, you know, brutally honest, too, because I, I like it. Uh, this sport, especially the UFC, is packed with the biggest group of cowards in professional sports. All that BS hyping up guys and their courage is garbage. I genuinely hate this sport and most of the fighters, most of the time, real hate. W- where did that sort of come from? Just out of curiosity. You know, I, I, I got to pick your brain here a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of guys took that. A lot of people on social media took that wrong as if I was attacking the UFC. And that's not how I, that's not how I, that's not how I meant it. I meant all the fighters in the UFC. Like yeah, that's how I took the, it. Yeah. Specifically the fighters. It's this, I don't know, man, the, the culture has just changed. You know, me and Chael talked about this at length that, you know, the culture that I came up in is you, you just fight who they put in front of you. And if you're really the best in the world, then you're going to beat those guys. You know, like if you really believe that you're the best in the world, then you should, you should be able to beat whoever they put in front of you. And that's just not how it is. It's guys that are they're politic and their way through the through the system. And I don't think that that's the UFC's fault. You know that. I think you know maybe you know that problem. I think that problem might have been created a long time ago, and now it's kind of just spun out of control. But uh, you know, it's it's the guys that are just ducking the hard fights to try to pick the easiest fights above them. And, and, and you know, we, we all know who's a good matchup for us. We all know, you know, who's the tough matchups for us. We know the tough outs. You know, they may not. You know, say I'm rank 10 and the number four guy might be an easier fight than the number seven guy for me. It's just, it's all about styles, you know? And that's just not how I came up. It's not how I was coached. It's not how I was raised. You just fight who they put in front of you. And I'm just so sick of all these fighters just being the biggest group of pansies, man. It's, it's, they're just cowards, you know, like I'll fight anybody, you know? And, and that's just, that's just how I am. And it's just amazing to me that, that in, in a sport, that's supposed to be so full of tough guys. You have guys that are some of the biggest pussies you ever met. Do you, do you find this is something more so in the UFC than, than say other organizations? Cause you, you did fight in the UFC, you know, years ago and then you've come back, obviously. Do you find a big difference between the time you were there the first time and, and now? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, you know, and I, I guess I understand why guys do it. You know, guys are they're afraid of getting cut or, you know, you, you only get half your paycheck if you lose. Like I, I get it. Like, but it's, I don't know. I don't know what happened, and I don't. I don't know if this is kind of the equivalent of the Attitude Era in professional wrestling moving to the Entertainment Era, and you know, I, I don't know if that this. I don't. Maybe this is our our switch in culture, and and our, and our eras have changed. You know, and maybe it's not the tough guy era anymore, and it's not the, you know, who's just who's the baddest man. You know, but I find myself sticking to people that are much like myself. You know, like I, I still, I still find myself following the chill sons of the world and, and and the people that I surround myself with personally, you know, are still kind of in that group of people that, that come from the old school. So, you know, maybe, maybe my, maybe my thought process on the whole game is just aged. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm behind the times. Who have been, I mean, you don't have to mention names, but has there been a lot of opponents that you've had to go through just with guys not wanting to accept a fight with you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, kind of my New Year's resolution is is to try to just stop worrying and stop stop getting so upset about the politics. You know what I mean? And just and just control what I can control. My manager uh, Jim Walter says that all the time. Control what you can control. And I, I just get I, I get so angry, man, and it just festers inside of me. It makes me so mad because I just want my shot. I want the I want big names. I, I you know I I want big opportunities, and and I'm just not getting it because and it's for no other reason other than those guys not taking the fights, you know, and, and that's why I did get a little bit upset when people were saying that I was, you know, kind of bagging on the UFC. It's not the UFC at all because the UFC is trying to give me those opportunities. They, they, uh, Tiago Santos was my fourth opponent. Wow. You know, I, I said yes to the three previous and all those guys were ra- in the rankings. They were all big name guys. And 
the, the UFC is doing what they can, but they can't force people to fight. At this point, I'm just becoming a bully. Like now I'm calling people out who don't want to fight. Like now I'm just look like, now I look like an ass because I'm picking on people, you know? Right. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just, I mean, so yeah, you know, Tiago wasn't the first choice and that's why I respect him so much. And you haven't seen me say one bad thing, one negative thing about Tiago. Uh, that dude's a lot like me. You know, you can just tell in his mindset, his mentality, the, the dude will fight anybody, you know, and, and his career shows that, you know, whether he's had some ups and downs. The dude's a badass. So and, and, and he's a dangerous opponent. I mean, this is a great fight for you. You know, and, and if you're just looking at the rankings and stuff, I mean, he's not like a like a top ten guy, but still very dangerous. Um, you know, looking at your skill set and his, uh, how do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? Man, I, I think me me and Tiago are kind of similar. Um, as far as our, our mentalities when we fight, you know, he he's a he's a hard headed dude. Um you know, as far as how we match up, you know stylistically you know he's a big middleweight as well um so he's definitely one of the bigger middleweights in the division he's he's obviously a striker um so i i think that i definitely have the the advantage when it comes to the ground game um and then i think i'm just more technical you know i'm a lot cleaner of a striker you know i've always said i'm not the i'm not the guy that's gonna punch through your blocks and knock you out you know what i mean i I don't have dane henderson type power i'm i'm accurate and well timed you know it's it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's very clean. You know, I'm, I, I hit my target and I do it often. And that's how I put people down. And Tiago just breaks people. You know, he's got super powerful kicks. His hands are powerful. He, he's just a, a powerful dude, you know. So he'll definitely have the uh, the power advantage. You know, it, I'd be really stupid to just stand in the pocket and, let's, and just throw down, you know. But, uh, you know, he's dangerous, man. He's dangerous everywhere. He's damn near impossible to take down. You know, he's he's – and, and, and he's game. Yeah, he certainly is and has been on a roll just like yourself. So that's why I really like this matchup. It's two guys that have really, you know, gained some momentum and, you know, are probably looking for, you know, big fights, but guys just aren't uh, taking them. So I, th- I think that's what's really cool about this matchup. Now, you talked about training at Factory X. I imagine it's the usual cast of characters uh, as far as training partners like, you know, Ian Heinish, uh, C- Chris Camozzi, guys like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ian and Chris and brian and 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 then a whole slew of guys and nobody knows they're tough as shit um you know i i I always say i want to be the i want to be the guy that that talks about those people you know but i just got to get to a a point where it matters you know it's it's such a it's i don't know it's a weird culture there man it's it's never been to a gym like that before like it's and that's why i'm still here you know over a year later you know I, i wasn't sure how long i'd be here and at the beginning and and now i i don't see myself going anywhere for a long time it's just the, the way that Mark uh, Montoya has created this culture of just family and everyone's here for everybody else. You know, uh, my main sparring partner for this fight has been Adam Stroop. So I guess for the people that, you know, may or may not know Adam, he's almost a, uh, a copy of, of Tiago. I mean, they got similar style, similar size. Uh, both are hard to take down, you know, so it's it's been great, man. It's been really great. And it's just me, or I've noticed there's a lot of fighters flocking to Factory X these days. It seems like the room must be pretty busy with guys just, you know, coming over to cross train. Like I know there's that, you know, the guys over at Glory, like with, you know, Zach Cummins and James Krause. And then you have other guys from, you know, Evolution, uh, you know, that are coming over. It seems like it's been really busy there. Yeah, it's been great, man. Especially, you know, me and Zach and and James, we were here in in camp together for a while during, you know, when they were getting ready for uh, their fights in St. Louis and just being able to just grind in the room with those guys. I mean, I, I feel so terrible for Zach. I mean, that dude was ready. He was, I, I have no doubt in my mind that guy was going to take out Tiago Alves. I, I really don't. Uh, and we, and we all seen how James did, you know, James had a really, really tough fight with a tough dude. You know, uh, who's Alex White. Yeah. Alex, Alex White. Yeah. That, that dude is impossible to look good beating. He's just so tough and so gritty and he, he's got so much power in his hands. I think James did a great job of switching up his game plan and, and, and being, you know, the crafty veteran and, and having a high fight IQ. So, and I think a lot of that stuff stems from, from Mark. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, what are you getting to Brazil? Have you kind of mapped that out yet as far as flights and everything? Yeah, it's terrible. It's awful. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have to be there on Tuesday. So, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. They, uh, I think, they, I think I fly out Monday, Monday afternoon, and I'll get there Tuesday afternoon. So uh, it'll it'll be a hell of a flight. And, and who's going to be in your corner? I imagine Mark Montoya. Yeah, Mark. Uh, oh, as always, Scott Morton, my jujitsu coach. That dude's a monster. And then uh, my manager Jim will be there with us. Nice, Jim Walter. Uh, he's, yeah. he's been on a roll lately with his fighters. Stipe with that great performance last week. It's uh, it's good. Yeah, to see. Yeah, about that. Jim Jim just became one of the uh, 
you know, yeah. to, to, something we already knew. Right. You know, one of the best in the business, but now everyone else is seeing that. You know what I mean? It, he he does a great job of, of guiding guiding people through kind of the the business part of it. At, historically, fighters are really shitty <laughs> as far as guiding their careers. You know what I mean? Like we're really good at training, and we'll go in there, we'll fight anybody, but but really having people to watch your back. I've been fortunate that I got a lot of good people that are kind of guide me through this this crazy world. And, and it's crazy to think how much Jim's done in the last couple of years. I remember his first client was Brian Rogers. And, and I remember when Brian got, you know, yeah. decided to go with him and he sort of convinced Jim to get in there. And now Jim's uh, doing great things. So it's, uh, it's awesome, awesome to see you're part of that team. If it wasn't for uh, Brian Rogers, none of, this, none of this stuff for me would be happening. Uh, it's kind of a crazy story. I met Brian Rogers on the underground. Okay. Uh, I met Brian on the underground. I, it was probably... I don't know, man, 2008. And uh, so I just turned, I just had my first pro fight. And like all fighters say, you know, everyone pretends like they're not on the underground. Everybody's on the underground every day. It's just how it is. But Brian was coming from Ohio and he was coming through Omaha on his way to Denver, I believe. And uh, I think his wife's family lives here as well. So, uh, and he needed somewhere to stop and train. And so, you know, I got him in contact with Ryan Jensen. He showed up and me and that dude just clicked right away. And we stayed in contact ever since then. And then he ended up moving to Denver. And that's how I got the connection to Factory X was through Brian's ah, that we always stayed in contact. So then Brian introduced me to Chris Camozzi shortly after that. And I always stayed in contact with Chris. And then, you know, Chris at the time was coming back and forth to Omaha. He was fighting and cornering guys. And, and then uh, when the time came, you know, I, I knew I had a place to go uh, when I needed a new look. And this is how I got hooked up with Factor X, and I met Jim through Mark. Very cool. Small world. That's uh, that's very yeah. interesting. Um, how do you sort of see this fight unfolding on uh, February 3rd? Uh, you know, it's Tiago's uh, – it's his home country, not necessarily his hometown, but I think we all know how Brazilians come out and fight, uh, you know, in their, in their hometown. I think that, as always, he's going to be super tough and, and, and aggressive in the first round, but – Tiago's a counterfighter. He's not going to chase me, you know, and, and so that's, it's going to be a, it's going to be kind of a crazy little fight. It's going to be a chess match for a while until one of us gets pissed off. And, uh, that's just the type of fighters that the two of us are. Once, once one of us gets mad, it's on after that. So it's really about who can keep their cool the longest, you know? Um, and I, and I think I'll win that game. You know, I, I usually don't get, as we all know, I got, I, I usually have a tough time starting fast. So, um, I'd, I'd almost rather he did start fast and, and get me going right away so we can just get it over with, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I think once he settles in, slows down a little bit, I think that uh, I'll be able to pick him apart. And, uh, and I see me getting a finish. I don't see, I don't see Tiago last until the third round fighting like he fights. You got a long plane ride to Brazil going to, going to Belim. Um, what would I find you doing on the airplane? Are you, other than trying to sleep, obviously, but uh, you know, you're, are you watching any movies? You listen to any podcasts or reading any books or anything like that? Probably lots of podcasts. Okay. Uh, I'm a what's, big what's, podcast your, what's your, what's your go-to? Like, so if I looked on your phone right now and I looked under the, you know, the podcast there, what would I find? Um, you would find the Joe Rogan experience for sure. Uh, I love, I love Joe Rogan's podcast, man. I almost never miss one. Uh, Chael Sonnen. Obviously, has a great podcast that I've been on a couple times. Um, let's see here. Bill Burr. Oh, of uh, course. Monday the, morning the, podcast, one of my of favorites. Course. Yeah, Monday and Thursdays. Yeah. Uh, so Bill Burr, Joe Rogan, Chael Sonnen, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Okay. Got like one of the best yeah. podcasts I've ever listened to. It's awesome, man. I'm, I'm an old school. I'm, I've been a Stone Cold fan my you know since I was a kid. So, um. I think that's it. Oh, well, there's the the Kenny Florian and John Anik podcast. I listen to that one. USC Unfiltered, I listen to that one. So, uh, nice. You're a lot up to MMA. date on your MMA podcast. That's good. Yeah, I'm up to date, man, always. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll throw on uh, – who, who, who does Frank Mir do, do his podcast Oh, with? Uh, the phone booth with uh, Richard Hunter. Yeah, phone booth yeah. fighting. Yeah, 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 I'll listen to Frank Mir every once in a while. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm, a lot of MMA and throwing in some, some Bill Burr and uh, – Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's great. You got to get Jim to hook up the uh, the Joe Rogan, uh, you know, experience, uh, you know, guest spot because Stipe got on there. I'm sure he could uh, put in a few good words for you there. Stipe, by the I way, know. was so good on there. I, it was one of my favorite interviews I've heard of his in, in a long time. And I've interviewed him and I thought it was awesome. Stipe is such a – he's a strange guy for a lot of people because I think people expect him to be 
you know, he's the champion of the world. He's the baddest man on the planet. And the dude is just a normal ass guy. Like he's, he's so chill and just like, I feel like Stipe is a lot like me. And, and I do find that Jim tends to manage guys that are, that are very much alike. So uh, Jim says all the time that me and Stipe are like the same person, just in different weight classes, you know, um, you know, we, we all, we, we, everyone has the opportunities to do the crazy superstar stuff, but just like Stipe, I'd rather, I'd rather be sitting at home with my, a couple of buddies and, you know, and my family. That's just, you know, we don't do a whole lot of hanging out with famous fighters and superstars and movie stars. This is not our thing. You know what I mean? And I'm not knocking anybody that does, but if you're look at Cody Garbrandt, that dude is like a rock star. Look at his Instagram. He's constantly with famous people and he's got the nice watches and the cars and you know, this is not my style, you know? And I think Steve is a lot like that, you know? Good stuff. Well, I uh, can't wait for this fight. Uh, UFC fight night, one twenty five coming up here, February 3rd. Uh, Anthony, it's always a pleasure getting a chance to talk to you. Always uh, dropping some knowledge here on, on the show, which I really appreciate. Just uh, remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, my Instagram is, uh, Anthony Smith, UFC. Uh, my Twitter is at Lionheart Smith, and uh, I always have a good time interacting with the fans, uh, at least the ones that aren't trolling for sure. Uh, as always, uh, you know, I want to thank Factory X, my family, my kids, um, Michaela, you know, uh, just everybody that supports me, man. And uh, for this camp, I, uh, I used Icon Meals uh, to meal prep to try to get my weight a little bit lower, see if we can figure this 185 thing out a little bit better. Um, and, and the UFC Performance Institute has done a good job of helping me out with kind of guiding me electronically through the through the wake up part. So you know I'm I'm lighter now than I'm lighter right now than what I checked in at the Tuesday before our Friday weigh in the last three fights. So we're on track to have a good weight cut. So we'll see. So but definitely shout out to the PI for sure. And that's it, man.